Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this video, we're going to be talking about the brachial plexus, and I have it highlighted here. Uh, these are the nerves that are coming out of your, um, out of your, starting with C5, your cervical spine number five, and all the way down to T1. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, dive into this in more detail. So as mentioned before, this is the uh, brachial plexus. So as I zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see the portions of the body that this innervates. This comes out of your neck and out of your L1. And uh, your neck being, let's actually zoom into the neck and see where they come out. So what I want to do is I want to, so I want to highlight the portion of the neck where these come out, okay? so. It, it starts out at the C5, okay? I'm gonna multi-select here. I want, I want you to be able to see these. And starting here with your C4, okay, your cervical spine four, your five, okay, your C5, C7, and then your um, thoracic one, your T1 spine. So as you can see here, these are the nerves that are coming out. So let me deselect these. So let's take a look at these nerves here. Let me make sure I can multi-select. So they're coming out of your spine. And this this portion of the of the brachial plexus, these are the ventral uh, ramus. These are the um, what you would call the roots. Okay, so think of like a tree. Alright, so a, a tree kind of before it, it before it develops a trunk and before it develops branches, it has roots. And as you can see, where they're attached to the spine or where they're coming out of the spinal cord, they, they do kind of have like a root, a root-like structure, okay? And, and they do come out, there's an anterior root and there's also a posterior root, as you can see as we turn it around, okay? And we're taking a look at the posterior spinal cord there uh, behind the uh, vertebrae. So that's the root portion of the brachial plexus. So they're divided into, um, into three major portions, the root, and as I mentioned before, um, when you go from a root, you end up you end up running into then the trunk. Okay, so there's the trunk portion of the brachial plexus. So that's kind of just right, just barely above the, the clavicular area. Okay, and here's your clavicle, so right above the clavicular area. And then from the trunk area, it goes into divisions and subscapular. Okay, so just below your scapula, below your clavicle bone there. It goes into its divisions, its main divisions. All right now these main divisions uh, these main divisions you have uh, they're, they're called the anterior division and the uh, posterior division okay so of course the anterior division referring to the fact that uh, this nerve the one that I have highlighted right here this one I'm sorry this is the posterior division because uh, let's follow this one for example so the posterior division you're you're going to notice that it, it's kind of hiding behind the humerus there. So this nerve will take a turn and go down the posterior aspect of the arm, right? And then we'll, we'll follow it down in just a minute. I still want to continue uh, taking a look at the anterior and posterior. So, so now I want to look at the two. Okay, so that was the posterior. These are the two anterior, just, uh, just uh, above it and just below it, superior and inferior to it. These are the anterior divisions. And as I mentioned, just like the posterior, these nerves will take a turn and innervate muscles and skin on the anterior portion of the arm, okay? So from the divisions, then you have what we call the cords, all right? And we have three main cords. This one is called the lateral cord, okay? And again, lateral meaning that it's going to innervate the lateral aspect of the arm. And then you have the posterior cord, and the medial cord. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow these these nerves here. So this is your lateral cord. Now let's go ahead and follow it down. Okay, so the lateral cord will break into the median. Okay, the median cord or the medium nerve, and let's follow it down all the way. So notice the median curve. Uh, I'm sorry, the the median nerve. 
um, this nerve will innervate the um, the forearm flexors. Okay, so when you want to make a fist, okay, these are the muscle. This is a nerve that that comes in contact with those muscles on the forearm that create the fist. Now, something interesting here. Uh, let's follow that nerve. Okay, let's remove this this um, this ligament here. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, because here, this is still the median, uh, the median nerve. Now, uh, you may have heard of something called carpal tunnel. All right, carpal tunnel occurs when that nerve is damaged, and as you can see, where this nerve is running down into the wrist, um, just above it, you have this this uh, this tissue, this soft tissue that isn't very flexible. Okay, and then just below it, you have uh, bone, the the wrist bones. So you have you have this really sensitive nerve that's in between these um, these two fairly rigid structures, and when that nerve is overworked or damaged, it swells up, and there isn't a lot of give in its surroundings, so it'll swell up, uh, and what happens is that it prevents signaling into the into the fingers into the palm, so you'll get numbness in the fingers, um, and again, this is called carpal tunnel. Now, if this particular uh, situation persists, you can end up with something called apand. All right, so you'll notice here, let's zoom in a little bit. You'll notice here that this nerve also innervates um, the thumb, okay? And, and it is primarily responsible for uh, us being able to move our thumbs. That, that's what gives us that, that skilled handling of tools or pencils or pens or brushes or whatever the case may be. And so if that nerve is permanently damaged through carpal tunnel, if it persists, then you end up with that ape hand. Uh, condition where you can't really move uh, that thumb okay so that's that's again if we're going what we're going backwards that's the the median nerve okay now let's zoom out a little bit again it's controlling those muscles that uh, help you close the fist all right so now what we want to do is we want to go back because here we go and let's put you right in the middle so there's that median nerve right and again, it goes back to our lateral cord. Now, you notice the lateral cord also has another nerve, right? You see that, that we're branched off right here? Okay, that's a musculocutaneous nerve, all right? So let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what it innervates. And this particular nerve innervates your brachialis, your biceps brachii, all right? So when you want to uh, flex your arm, you want to flex the bicep, that's the musculocutaneous that branches off from the lateral cord, all right? So just inferior to that lateral cord, you have the posterior cord, okay? So let's take a look at that posterior cord. And as you can see, this cord also bifurcates, okay? It splits into two. This one back here, okay, your auxiliary and your radial, all right? So let's talk about the auxiliary first, just right here. And as you can see, it kind of wraps around, it wraps around your shoulder. And this innervates the deltoids. Here, let's do a little bit. Let's zoom out. Oh, yeah, turn it around. Uh, so it innervates the deltoids and the teres minor muscles. Okay, so it helps in controlling your shoulder. All right, so that's the auxiliary. And then let's look at that really big one there, the radial. Okay, so the radial, we can back up a little bit so we can get a better perspective. And as you can see, this is it wraps around to the posterior, on the posterior arm. And it's mainly the extensor muscles of the posterior arm and forearm. So the extensors being your triceps, right? So these are the antagonists to the brachial, to the musculocutaneous. All right, so these help extend the arm. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit more again. Okay, so that was the axillary and radial, and that was the posterior cord. So now, so here's our posterior cord. Now we want to look at the next, the last one, the, uh, the medial cord. Okay, now you'll notice the medial cord, this one turns into your ulnar, ulnar nerve. Okay, that ulnar nerve, uh, some of the um, forearm flexors. Okay, now uh, let's see here. Let's zoom, let's go down to see where this comes around. Now you'll notice here that it's coming around the elbow joint. Now, I don't know if you've ever hit your funny bone, right? It's funny they call it a funny bone because when you hit it, it isn't, it's not really funny, right? Now, um, so if you've ever hit that funny bone in your elbow right there, uh, you'll 
maybe you'll remember what the sensation was. If you recall, maybe you had a numbness on the pinky and ring finger, right? I've had it done several times and I've hit it so hard before where it wasn't just numb, but it was burning. My whole forearm and, and fingers were burning and it was, and it's, and it's those pinky and ring fingers primarily are the ones that are affected. And you can see those are the two branches from the ulnar nerve, all right? Now, uh, something else that I want to discuss before I finish, because it's pretty much that pretty much does it for the brachial uh, plexus, is some uh, two other injuries that um, you may or may not be aware of that that can happen in this particular part of the arm. Um, well, actually, there's a, there's a lot of things that can happen um, here. Let me. There we go. You know, uh, just some things some things to be aware of of some of the injuries that I've heard of that that happen. Some some fairly tragic. Um, for example, when you have a, a small child, um, you know, and, and I have a two-year-old son now, and, you know, I mean, I can't imagine ever doing this, but, you know, you hear stories of, and, and, you, and you see it maybe sometimes, but, um, you know, you got to be really careful with yanking on a, lot, a little child's arm because, you know, they, they could hang, you know, at a jungle gym all day long. You know, they can just hang and play at a playground and not cause any nerve damage because their muscles are just used to it but they're not used to sudden yanks and pulls like somebody who you know might get impatient with their child will do um, and you know so so you wanna you know if you're a parent you really want to be careful and not yank your child's arm because you could cause nerve damage and one of the signs of that is you know you, you, you yank on your child's arm and the next day they can't they can't that, that arm's not functioning well because of, there may have been nerve damage and again that does happen so um, you know, a cautionary tale for parents with that. And for adults, um, you know, I've heard of stories of motorcycle accidents where, you know, um, you know, the motorcycle, and, and I used to have a motorcycle and I got, you know, thank God I never got into a, a, an accident, but I, I heard of stories of guys taking falls and as they were bracing themselves, their arms were, you know, they, their, their shoulder area hit the ground while they were skidding and it, it, there was almost like a, not necessarily a shoulder separation, but the nerves at the roots were yanked out of the spinal cord. Can you imagine that? I mean, that, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's a pretty dramatic injury. And unfortunately it's a permanent injury because when these roots get yanked out of the spinal cord, that's it, that does it. Your, your arm is basically done. The muscles will atrophy and you lose full function of that arm. Uh, and one of the injuries that I'm actually very familiar with that I experienced a lot playing football um, and, and, and I only played at the high school level so that you know I can only imagine how much worse it could be with even bigger and faster um, uh, gameplay was that we called them stingers and it happened to me a lot and, and I'm, I'm guessing because it happened so frequently to me I must have damaged those nerves and I never let them heal fully so anytime that I would go in for a hit um, Back in my day when I played, you know, my favorite way to hit was with the helmet, which you never do now. With the helmet, lead with the head, head or lead with the shoulder. And when I would lead with the shoulder, um, you know, I would get a stinger. And the sensation that I would feel would be a burning sensation on my neck, on my clavicular area. And then my arm would go numb. And I would literally, my arm would literally just droop down and it would be like a dead arm. It would just, it would, I would just lose all function, um, and that's actually, you know, if I kind of go back to some of the other nerves, in particular, um, let's see, in particular with the ulnar nerve here, all right. So damage to this nerve, and we recall that it, it, uh, it, it controls a lot of the muscles that extend the arm. So, for example, if you're lifting up your wrist, or I'm sorry, not not your ulnar arm, uh, that, that that would be your um, your radial nerve actually, your your radial nerve. If that, if that nerve is damaged, you get what's called a wrist drop. So your wrist, so if you can kind of hold out your arm and you hold your, your hand straight out, your, you, you kind of hold your, your wrist straight up, if that nerve, the radial nerve is damaged, then your wrist can just drop. Okay, it'll just drop because you lose the muscles that, that contract, that extend the wrist. And then with your ulnar nerve, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, we have the funny bone, the, the pinky and ring finger going numb. Uh, you, you, also, you can also get something called claw, claw hand, where those muscles are damaged 
the flexor muscles on the arm that flex and close the wrist or close the hand and, and it gives you that and it gives you a permanent kind of claw hand so so these are some of the things that can happen with these nerves with the brachial plexus as you can see there's a lot going on here um, a lot of potential injuries uh, with extremities because they can be vulnerable sometimes to you know you know different things that happen in life um, but uh, that pretty much does it for the brachial plexus so we talked about where they came from uh, how they divide and what they innervate and some of the functions and some of the um, some of the things that can happen if these nerves are damaged. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.